Okay. Uh, so again, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Graham Furness, and uh, today I'm going to be doing a nice uh, bite-sized uh, lunch presentation uh, for uh, project management or development techniques uh, using the uh, Scrum approach um, from the, um, the Agile uh, um, uh, ways of doing project management. Um, we have a nice, uh, um, concise set of slides and uh, agenda that we're going to be going through. Um, and this, is, uh, this presentation is meant to be uh, for those who uh, may be practicing Agile or those who aren't familiar with Agile uh, and um, the Scrum approach or the Scrum framework for it. Um, it's going through and giving you the basics end-to-end uh, -end of this uh, simple to uh, talk about but hard to implement um, type of uh, framework. Uh, we'll be talking about that and, um, and giving you the overview. Um, and so two key sections at the beginning is just understanding the, the three pillars of Scrum, um, which are basically the essential values that Scrum is built on, uh, on top of uh, Agile principles. Uh, we'll talk about um, Agile planning, which is all connected to um, both traditional and the Agile way of uh, doing project management. And, uh, and that slide is meant to dispel the myth that sometimes people think uh, Scrum approach and Agile um, approaches don't involve planning. They do, but they involve uh, very efficient uh, ma time management for planning. Um, and then we'll run through the Scrum framework. Uh, we have a quick introduction to Scrum, uh, talk about the uh, product backlog followed by the sprint backlog and sprint execution, and then understand um, visual management and uh, information radiators. Uh, and then follow up with uh, any of your questions um, uh, and other uh, comments at the end of the, the presentation. Okay, so uh, let's get started then. We'll begin with uh, the pillars that support the Scrum framework. Okay, so the three pillars of Scrum. Um, inspection, adaption, and transparency. And uh, it doesn't have to be in that particular order, um, but these three characteristics um, are the key supporting characteristics that the Scrum approach and uh, framework is uh, trying to accomplish on top of uh, just generic Agile um, principles. And so if we start off with um, inspection. so. In the Scrum framework and Scrum way of doing projects, um, we want to have uh, continual inspection. And um, it's, it's connected to this statement down below as well of learning, not predicting. So what I want to be able to do is have inspection of the product um, and the project elements that I'm working on as well as the process um, techniques that I'm using to, uh, to move forward. Um, and when I inspect things, I can then learn and adjust and be flexible and be agile, right? So without having uh, proper inspections and regular inspections, um, we aren't going to meet the goals of uh, having a flexible and agile way of uh, developing potentially changing requirements in a changing environment. So we can inspect um, the development team uh, and their progress. Uh, every day we'll be talking about a daily scrum and a stand-up meeting. And um, uh, we can understand what was done yesterday and what's being done um, today. Um, we can inspect uh, our product. Um, as we're developing it, we go back and forth with our stakeholder or the customer who specified the uh, feature we're working on to confirm we're working on the right things and that the requirements are evolving in the right way. So all of this inspection um, allows me to uh, understand how we're progressing and, uh, and then we can move to this, we can start adapting based upon the um, inspection and learning. And so adaption is straightforward connecting into the agile concept. We want to be adaptive, flexible, and agile. So based upon what we're seeing from the inspection and frequent inspections, um, we can then uh, change direction um, change our processes, uh, update requirements, change our product direction. Um, Agile and Scrum are meant to be an adaptive way of doing um, projects as opposed to the traditional waterfall technique 
Uh, we do all the planning and requirements gathering up front, and then we get all those signed off in a big batch mode, and then we start moving forward with development. And we get all that done, and then we do our deployment. That's not very adaptive. Um, the traditional way of doing projects assumes you know the end product up front. Agile and Scrum assume we know the product uh, will evolve, and um, we have to adapt along the way. And the last of the key pillars um, is um, transparency. And this really drives the statement down below about Scrum being an empirical process uh, control um, way of doing things. Um, we need to be able to um, see product and progress, and, um, and it needs to be as visible as possible. So when we uh, talk about transparency, transparency of um, the development team and uh, what they're working on, how it's progressing, and how the team is performing, transparency on the product itself, how requirements are evolving and um, changing over time, how they're growing or shrinking in the overall uh, project. Um, we'll talk about this section at the end in more detail when we talk about the information radiators, which are key visual cues and very simple cues which allow me to, um, be a, to inspect how things are going and to be um, adaptive. So again, the three pillars of Scrum, uh, Scrum good to know because these are the elements um, that make uh, Scrum uh, work. So from the three pillars of uh, Scrum, um, I then want to take our presentation and talk about the, uh, the planning onion. So uh, the planning onion is sort of generic, um, agile uh, approach to uh, planning within project management. Um, but then it, it allows me to introduce some of the uh, Scrum artifacts, um, which uh, go into the layers of the, the planning onion. So when we're doing uh, particular projects and we're managing particular products, um, there should be at the top level uh, a generic strategy and a long-term plan uh, for the organization and how the, the products, or in our case, if it's an IT service, how the IT service um, fits into supporting business process and um, the overall strategy. And uh, we have multiple um, services out there and um, strategies. So we have uh, the portfolio level uh, management prioritizing things and choosing the right projects um, in the right uh, priority. So this would be the same in traditional project management or um, agile uh, and scrum project management. Um, we always have to prioritize what we need to do based upon uh, strategy and portfolio concepts. But then where we take the different approach from traditional project management, which is the more sequential um, plan, requirements, build, test, implement, and go into more of the agile way of doing things, we focus on the, the product. And at the product um, planning level, we have um, the product backlog, which we'll be going into in uh, detail in a couple of slides. And so the product backlog is a concept out of the Scrum framework um, in which we can um, come up with all of the requirements and all of the things that need to be done uh, for a product or service. And we continually update, update that with an activity called um, uh, product backlog, uh, grooming, and refinement. So we do planning in uh, Scrum based upon the artifact and the activity of um, product backlog, grooming, and refinement. And I continually do this, which means I'm continually working with my customers and stakeholders to add, adjust, and modify the product backlog as the project and the environment might change um, as we move forward. So this has everything I need to work on. It's at a, a high level of the planning onion. I need to go down one step and say, well, when we have a project to uh, work on a service or product, we may not be doing everything that's in my um, product backlog. So we move down a step and we take a portion of the product backlog and say these items or this much effort is required um, for the project or the release. And so the release backlog is that portion of the product backlog um, in which I can uh, put together as part of my release planning. So we went from something potentially bigger in the product backlog to uh, a more refined 
um, level of detail in the release backlog. And then we need to start doing the work. And in the planning onion, we call it starting the iterations. Um, Scrum refers to those iterations as um, sprints. And at the beginning of every sprint, um, two to four week period, uh, we do sprint planning. And we use a sprint backlog to keep um, a very simple listing of the requirements and things we have to do um, for that uh, particular work period. So we get more detailed again and more refined. In the planning onion, we can see that there is, um, there is uh, the full-blown traditional planning done in a Scrum uh, project. And um, it's done with different uh, events and artifacts. And it's meant to eliminate a lot of the waste of um, big batch planning and documentation up front into uh, just enough planning at just the right time as we move into the um, sprint. And then we even do daily planning um, with the, uh, the daily Scrum event within the uh, Scrum framework. And the planning here is to really uh, um, use all of the pillars of Scrum with inspection, adaption, and um, transparency to see what was happening yesterday, how do we coordinate for today, and are there any uh, problems we need to uh, get out of the way so we can move forward. So the planning onion is a nice way of showing that we get from very high level planning um, into progressively more refined day by day planning. And um, these, uh, these artifacts here and events <coughs> are the key elements of the, um, the framework uh, that makes Scrum uh, tick. So let's go through those, um, those artifacts and uh, those events and understand a bit more about the um, Scrum framework. Our next slide is um, titled Scrum in short. The Scrum framework and uh, Scrum practices are based upon three key roles. Um, the events centered around the sprint backlog and the product backlog, which are the key artifacts. Um, and we've got a, a loose set of rules, um, such as always choose items to work on in the sprint from the uh, top of your product backlog. So this is a good slide just to introduce the pieces and then we can do a bit of a, a walkthrough. So if we start off with the roles, um, I'm gonna start off with the uh, product owner. The product owner is um, obviously a key role. There's only three main roles here. There's more, but these are the three key roles. Um, the product owner is the one doing the, um, the product and release planning and the main artifact or tool that they're using is the product backlog, as we described back in the, um, the planning onion. And the activity that the product owner is um, conducting is the continual product backlog grooming. So uh, all stakeholders can contribute um, uh, an item, a feature that needs to be worked on in the product backlog, and the product owner is going to refine that um, with product backlog grooming to break the story down as it moves towards the top, uh, do some basic um, estimating with the development team, and uh, prioritize, that's the key thing, prioritize that feature in terms of when do we uh, want to work on it. Um, the other role, I'll jump down to the development team. Someone has to uh, do the work. Um, the product owner is a business role and a requirements management role basically with the product backlog. So the development team needs to take those requirements and elaborate them with the uh, stakeholders who uh, contributed them and, um, and, and do the actual development and testing. So they're gonna work um, with the sprint backlog. And the development team in Scrum uh, follows the agile uh, uh, principle of always having a cross-functional multi-talented team. They've got all the skills necessary to develop the work from beginning to end during the uh, sprint. And um, if they follow the, uh, the tasks that are outlined to develop the functionality, and they also complete things according to non-functional definition of done requirements, they're gonna be producing the potentially shippable product increment. So as you get a feature completed in the sprint backlog, um, according to the definition of done, we then have uh, a potentially shippable and usable and valuable um, product increment. 
So the development team and their sprint backlog follow these activities over here. So the overall sprint is the iteration, the period of time, typically two weeks to four weeks, um, that uh, is appropriate to fit uh, five or six different um, product backlog items, uh, or we call them user stories, um, into the sprint backlog, and then the development team can get those done. Uh, they can inspect and adapt uh, along the way. And it's very, uh, very time boxed um, cycles. So the sprint, we want to time box it, uh, again, two to four weeks. Uh, let's say we have a two week sprint. The first activity in that two week sprint is going to be sprint planning. And again, it's going to be time boxed. Scrum loves to time box things because it forces people to get the job done in a fixed amount of time and develop uh, a rhythm and cadence uh, for getting through the project. So sprint planning in a two week sprint might be four hours at the very beginning removing items from the product backlog to the sprint backlog. And um, then we can begin our sprint execution along with um, every day of the sprint, um, a daily scrum meeting at the beginning. We keep doing this all the way through the um, sprint, uh, coordinating, slowly getting items done according to a, a definition of done and creating a potentially shippable product increment. And then at the last day of the sprint cycle, so again, if it's uh, a two week sprint on the 10th day, we do a formal sprint review. We demo working potentially um, shippable product. We do the formal um, acceptance and, uh, and sign off of those um, items. And then the team goes into uh, the rest of the day doing the sprint retrospective, which is a continual improvement activity. So what did we learn? How can we, uh, again, inspect uh, and uh, adapt to, uh, to a changing environment? And then the next day, we begin the next um, sprint cycle. And we just keep working our way through this um, cycle. And we keep working our way by moving product uh, backlog items into our um, sprint backlog. So let's take a look at how this works with um, a bit more uh, visual uh, cues to it. So here we talk about um, product backlog grooming which we've just uh, described as being the main activity of the uh, product owner, um, and um, how things are eventually moved over into um, the sprint backlog. So it all starts here. Um, we have a product or a service in um, IT service management concepts, and we start with any customer or stakeholder to that product. Um, and those um, those roles will create their requirements um, called features or items or user stories in a very simplistic way. And, um, and the purpose is not to be detailed. You don't need to be detailed up front because um, Agile and Scrum promote uh, communication and collaboration. And we don't want to give the requirements to the development team to say, go and develop this in isolation of not talking to the uh, the stakeholder or customer who came up with the requirement. So the, the user story is very small. It's basically a format of as a particular role in the product, um, I want to be able to do this functional requirement so that I can achieve this objective. And it's enough information for the development team to have an idea of what needs to be done. And when they're working on these things during the sprint, they're going to go back and talk to the uh, particular stakeholder who gave the requirement to say, could you tell me more? So that's just-in-time requirements gathering. And um, it's just-in-time uh, elaboration of these um, user stories into more detail. So you could almost think of the product backlog as being placeholders for things that need to be um, developed. Um, and it's just enough information to have a basic understanding, but not, but not take the place of um, a conversation when the development activity happens. So that's what the product owner is doing. And then as these stories go into the product backlog, we prioritize and gradually refine uh, things based upon a sequence. So a story at the very bottom may be captured as what's called an epic, where it's a very large story. Um, I want to develop um, a scheduling system. Okay, that can be broken down to a lot of smaller stories. 
So based upon um, priority and uh, sequencing, as things start moving to the top, the product owner will um, work with uh, customers and stakeholders to break things down to smaller stories. And, um, and then eventually when we get to the top items that are going to be brought into a work cycle, brought into a sprint, then we have the smallest breakdown of these stories um, at the very top. So the product owner is continually doing this and continually making sure we're prioritizing what would give the most value to the um, overall customers and stakeholders um, uh, throughout the project. So during um, these meetings, uh, again, the Scrum Master and the product owner might be working with these stakeholders. The Scrum Master's role is to coach and train everybody in the use of these uh, thin, simple, user stories and to explain that we're not trying to document every and all things at the very beginning. We'll get more detailed when we begin the sprint. So the second level of uh, refinement and uh, estimating happens when the product owner and development team and Scrum Master get together, uh, just going back a slide, in the sprint planning event. So back in sprint planning, we take the um, whatever number of user stories are at the top of the product backlog, and we start moving them over to the uh, sprint backlog. As we do that, the product owner reads the uh, user story, the development team can ask questions, the development team will estimate the effort um, of the user story to get more accurate, and we'll break the uh, user story down into tasks. So the only place that tasks are outlined in uh, a Scrum approach is um, in the sprint backlog. Again, it's just-in-time planning. We don't need tasks for items that are down at the bottom of the product backlog because they're low priority. We might not get to them or it might change. Why would I do planning and then have to replan later on? If it's coming into the product backlog for the next uh, potentially two-week work cycle, we're going to work on it. And that's the point at which we want to break things down to tasks. And again, not overly detailed, just enough to get started. We can elaborate and get more detailed as the development team starts collaborating with, uh, with each other and the, um, the stakeholders. So we continue to bring these stories into the sprint backlog until the, um, the amount of effort and estimates on these user stories fills up our sprint cycle. Again, it could be a two-week um, sprint cycle and um, We've got five stories and their tasks that, uh, that break it down. So then we can be transparent about what we're working on, and we'll talk about this at the end as well. Um, we, uh, we put all of our user stories and uh, their tasks into a Kanban chart. And then as we start uh, progressing, slowly we move the tasks and, um, into the doing column and done column, and then eventually we get the item and the user story done. And then uh, we can also have a, a goal of the sprint. So this particular work sprint will make a certain feature of a website um, mature enough to use. And we can monitor the progress of how fast are we burning through or burning down the tasks uh, that need to get done. Very transparent when we get working. So this leads into the next slide. What does it look like as I'm moving things during the work cycle um, into the uh, done column? And so this is uh, the sprint cycle of sprint, uh, once we just completed our sprint planning, so sprint execution and uh, daily scrum all the way through sprint review and um, retrospective. So here's our starting point, right? Day one, our development team, um, working with the scrum coach, should they need any impediments or questions asked or problems solved, they start off. The uh, team is self-managed and they pick the appropriate um, task they want to start working on first that they think will help them get through the, um, the sprint backlog. Um, we start moving things into the uh, doing column. At the beginning of day two, we have um, the daily scrum meeting. So it's for the development team to say three things. Everyone goes around, what did you do yesterday? What are you working on today? And are there any problems uh, or impediments in the way? And the scrum master and coach is te teaching the team, um, be transparent about what you're working on and what your challenges are. 
work together as a team. Let me know if I can help in any way. So we continue to do that. The same thing happens on the morning of day three, and um, the diagram kind of rushes it forward. But eventually, we get all of these tasks and um, items into our done column. If something is not done according to a checklist called a definition of done, then um, it simply, uh, we don't put it in the done column. It's going to be put back in the product backlog to be reprioritized and more than likely taken to be finished in the next um, sprint. So if it's not done, we don't credit it anywhere. We don't credit percentages. It's either 100% done or it's not. Anything not done goes back in the product backlog. So now that we're done and we're at the end of our um, sprint, we go into the product demo. So this is where now all three roles attend, uh, my product owner, my scrum master, and my development team, um, and my stakeholders to the uh, items that have got completed. I demo the working item. N no PowerPoint slides, this is demoing working finished software. And um, then we get the stakeholders and everyone to say we agree, it's done, what we want, um, we can potentially deploy it or at least keep it uh, clear that it's finished. And then we get past that um, activity and then we can go into the sprint retrospective. So again, if it's uh, a two week sprint, we spend about four hours doing product demo, um, the next three hours doing sprint retrospective. The development team does that continual um, learning. So inspect, adapt and be transparent about what's going on and then we uh, repeat the sprint cycle. And we just keep going around the clock until we get our product um, finished. And so the last slide of our uh, presentation, um, information radiators. Remember that Agile and Scrum want to be very transparent. Um, I can see my product backlog. The product owner should make sure the product backlog is um, transparent and people see all the user stories by priority if they want. You know, if they, if they go to a particular board or um, bring up a particular system. Um, the product increment is the items of the product backlog that have got completed during a sprint, and here's how much we've got done. This is very motivating to see, right? If this is just an endless list, we think we'll never get through it. But if we see the product increment growing, we're going to be um, motivated. The, uh, and, and we can also start tracking progress with a product uh, and a release burndown chart, right? So all of these user stories um, are plotted at the beginning of the project. And as things get done up here and the, and the product increment gets larger, the amount of work remaining gets smaller. And we can see the light at the end of the tunnel because we can draw a trend line to say what, what sprint number should we be completing the, um, the project. And we've already talked about the sprint backlog board. We just went through the uh, previous slide showing it's all visible. We can see tasks day by day moving from the to do, the doing to the done column. We can slowly see items being uh, carried to the uh, done column. And we can also calculate burn down. It's, it's a visible chart. We want to keep this in front of the development team and the, the product owner and scrum coach every day. As you get tasks completed, we start uh, plotting them on the chart. And then uh, above the line, we're a little bit behind schedule, below the line, a little bit ahead. And it, we keep working. Uh, we can see if we're on track or off track because of this daily update to say, you know, are we getting things done as planned within our uh, two week, uh, or in this case, 20 days, um, a four week um, sprint. Very visual, very powerful. It says a lot of things without spending a lot of time um, creating complicated reports. So that's our, um, our Scrum framework in short, uh, right on the mark here at uh, 12.30. And um, let me now check to see if we have any uh, questions and uh, we can complete the, uh, the presentation um, and I can, uh, I can answer these. Okay, I'm just going through the um, chat window. So there's uh, one question here. Uh, let me read it. Uh, what recommendations do you have for an organization with traditional waterfall culture 
that wants to start using an agile lean uh, approach and uh, scrum framework. Uh, how important is formal training and certification? So for that particular question, um, this is why we have the scrum master role. Notice there's no project manager role in uh, the scrum framework. That's because um, scrum frameworks have self-managed teams and um, a project manager likes to get involved and manage and tell teams what to do. Um, as long as the team takes the top items from a product backlog, we, we let them be self-accountable for getting it done. So now, the reason that's important, um, anytime you make a change to the way you do business, and the question was, um, how do we uh, go from a traditional waterfall culture to an agile culture? So you want to do basically organizational change management. Um, it's a shift of behavior and it's a shift of perceptions. And so the, the usual best way is um, develop uh, a scrum team, which would be a total, you know, a scrum master. There'd be someone who acts as a product owner and uh, a team acting as a uh, collaborative self-managed team. And, and start an organizational change activity where we start explaining the benefits of agile, where agile is more suited to some projects than traditional project management, and try a pilot. The best way, uh, like in the Agile and the Scrum approach, being transparent and being adaptive, try a safe, small, but significant enough um, pilot to uh, see what an Agile project looks like. And um, try it right out of the, the box, right out of the book. Um, do it the, uh, the full Scrum way. And that'll allow people to see, well, what do we like, what don't we like, what do we want to tailor. And then recognize that you're going to have to, as an organizational change project, um, slowly plant the seed and show the benefits of Scrum and um, the Agile approach and um, get a sense about how we can uh, show the benefits. So you need to speak the benefits to start with to get the initial sponsor of a, a Scrum pilot and the Scrum team. Um, and here's where um, this type of uh, basic training, just to have people understand the basics of uh, Scrum. You know, you can imagine this course spread out over two days. Um, always a great way. Uh, don't let people just find out by throwing them in the water. Uh, give them a basic overview. Um, have a Scrum pilot to demo it in your environment. And slowly do a lessons learned and an or follow an organizational plan, change plan, to, uh, to roll it out. Okay, and another question here I'm just seeing in the, um, the chat window. Um, the planning onion uh, talks about strategy and uh, portfolio, expanding on it a bit. Uh, the, the strategy and portfolio piece is a traditional management approach, be it um, an agile uh, project or a scrum project or a traditional project. So if we have um, a product and uh, we have a project which is a, a portion of the product that we want to uh, release and deploy. You've got a whole bunch of things that the organization um, needs to fund. So how do you choose which project, um, which product needs to be enhanced and uh, move forward? This is uh, where strategy and portfolio management is the higher level selection of projects across the organization. So. Strategy is your organizational strategy. You know, what are you trying to achieve from a strategic point of view, and what are the key initiatives and drivers organizationally? Typically, strategy is then given to a series of uh, portfolio managers to say, well, you have a set amount of funds for the current year, and you can, um, you can sponsor and authorize uh, X number of projects. So there's usually more projects than funding. Portfolio management is about making sure we align the, uh, the products we enhance and the release projects that we fund to move forward need to be um, aligned with strategy. And those that are most aligned with strategy and offer the best return on investment, those are the ones that portfolio management will fund. So when you get into the actual project, so the release is um, the term which is the, the actual project. The release will only um, happen when I sponsor the release. And that means I've got to get it approved and funded by portfolio management where they align it and see the best benefit for um, achieving a strategy. OK. 
Okay, so that's what the planning onion shows here. So these three, uh, four levels are particularly scrum terms and uh, events. This is a generic corporate way of um, uh, prioritizing and approving projects. Uh, another question I see here, um, does the Scrum framework negate the need completely uh, for a project manager? Mm. I have a background as a project manager, uh, PMP certified. Uh, so here's, here's the answer. Um, there is no specific project manager role in the Scrum framework. So um, there is no project manager. Now, most Scrum books would tell you that uh, project managers could take on the role of a scrum master. So they could be advising and uh, coaching the organization about um, how to do things in a, an agile and scrum way and help to remove problems. Um, I would actually argue that, and this is my own opinion, but product owners are a better suited um, equivalent job for a project manager because the product owner is planning the big picture and project managers plan the big picture. Um, the product owner uses, um, let me get rid of my markups here. Uh, the product owner uses the product backlog to gather the requirements from all different customers and stakeholders. And then we'll prioritize, refine and sequence um, all of these um, user stories. And then during sprint planning, we'll um, work collaboratively. They, they aren't allowed to direct, but they work collaboratively collaboratively with the development team, following a rule saying the development team has to uh, pick stories that fill up their sprint backlog, and uh, we do it from the top of the product backlog. The product owner will explain things if there's questions. So that, that's more of a hands-on, more of a planning type um, activity, and um, I would say that's better suited. As a former, uh, uh, well, as a PMP project manager, um, I would like to be planning and managing the product backlog more than I'd want to be um, a Scrum Master. Scrum Masters are more organizational change managers, which is a bit of a different task than being sort of hands-on uh, for a product and um, for product planning. Okay, so, so there is a role for uh, the pro uh, project managers in an agile environment, in a Scrum environment, um, but there's no defined project manager role and you're going to have to change the job title and change the job description. Um, I think it's better suited in the uh, product owner field. And, and in an organization, some, you don't have to get rid of uh, traditional project management. Um, some projects uh, where we, we know the requirements, we know how things have to be done, can be properly planned out and should be planned out using the traditional project management approaches. Agile and Scrum, is for projects and products that are done, uh, developed in an agile, iterative way because we, we have a changing environment or changing requirements. Okay, another question um, in my uh, chat box here. Um, looks like the last one. Uh, what learning activities or action items would you recommend for someone with a solid awareness level on agile methodologies but needing to have more solid um, practice level? Okay, so I think you're saying, how do you get more hands-on um, practice within um, an, an Agile project? And uh, what are the learning activities or, uh, or items? So, so this one is, uh, the statement is saying, if you, have, um, if you have a solid awareness level of Agile uh, methodologies and, and Scrum approach, then really the next step um, is um, try a pilot. Uh, and your pilot could be in, in a whole bunch of different ways. So this is kind of going into um, organizational change concept. Um, you know, if you've got the basics, the next thing is try out the basics. Um, and there's no better way to try the basics than to try it on a pilot project. Um, even uh, some, some little thing that I use, even your daily planning of uh, your week's work. Now, again, I, I work in the, in the training and consulting field, but um, I consider each, each day um, of uh, a consulting project as a sprint, and, and I run through and I have a product backlog of all the things I need to cover, and at the end of each day I reprioritize it. At the beginning of each day I pick the items that I need to work on that day. It tends to be um, shifting and changing all the time. 
So you can actually start to use uh, some of these um, agile concepts in just your basic day-to-day -day management. But the real goal is to then say, let's pick a product, let's pick a project, let's pick a pilot, and, um, and run these um, activities, and let's learn from it. It, it goes back to, um, to this piece here. This is also part of the, um, the Agile and Scrum way of uh, making an organizational change. So let's run a pilot so we can inspect and learn from it. Um, as we inspect and learn from it, we can adapt and say what worked well, what didn't, what, we can, what practices can we add to the organization, um, and, um, and make it transparent so other people can see the successes and you bring more people on board. Okay, so that's my best advice about how do you uh, get more practical. Uh, run it and try it. Okay, um, just looking at our uh, our questions list. I don't um, I don't see any more uh, questions. Uh, let me just check with uh, my colleagues. Uh, are there any more questions that anyone else uh, has? seeing some thank yous, so looks to be good. Okay, uh, well, I really hope you got uh, some good uh, short but um, concise and uh, practical value from uh, the presentation. Uh, as mentioned at the beginning, the uh, recording and um, the, uh, the slide deck is uh, available just after I finish and wrap up. Uh, everyone, thank you so much. Um, enjoy the uh, remainder of your week, and I hope to see you again uh, on one of our next um, webinars. Okay, thanks everyone, and um, have a great day and week.